Hello and welcome. I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. Thank, delight, delighted to have you all here. We're going to talk about your social. Now what? Social Media 102. We, talk, we covered Social Media 101 last week and delighted to have you here this week to go through the in-depth content and take your marketing to the next level. I'm Dave Meyer with BusyWeb, presenting to you on behalf of both BusyWeb and Constant Contact. If you need to reach us or if you have questions during the event today, you can reach me at dave at busyweb.com if you have questions that you'd like us to follow up on after the event, or you can call us at 612-4-BUSY-O, 612-424-9990. I'm gonna do a brief switch over for a second so that I can show you how to ask questions live during this event, and we'll take those questions during the event. We'll keep switching over back and forth. If you're at the Busy Webinar page, that you subscribe to and that you receive the email on, you may have already hit play and are watching this event through the embedded window. If you'd like to ask questions, you can click on the Google Plus link as highlighted right here in number one. And when you click that Google Plus link, it opens up in a new window. And then it says Q&A and live, if you're live during the event. If you're watching this as a replay, it's just going to say Q&A. You click play and then that opens up the same window, but with an embedded video player at a much larger size. So if you want to ask a question during the event, the way to do that is on the very lower right hand corner, you'll see that there's a big green ask a new question button. So click this green ask a new question button and ask a question here. If you have questions, if you want to talk about the social media accounts and tools that you use that you're getting the most benefit from, would love to have your interactions and to hear how things are going for you. We have a lot of people already signed on for the event today, so we'll take advantage of that time and get on with our, with our event right now. Again, if you do have questions, simply go to the events page, click on number one, the Google Plus link under number one, it's going to take you to this window. You'll need to enter in your email address if you haven't, or if you're not logged into Google. And then you can just click the big green Ask a New Question button to register those questions. And we'll be answering your questions during the event today. All right. So that's a little bit about us and what we need to do. Again, if you'd like the PowerPoint slides and notes, you can send me an email at davidbusyweb.com and we'll share all this with you after the event. BusyWeb is an online marketing company, digital marketers based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're just a little bit north of Minneapolis in a suburb called Champlin. And our team of 14 serves clients all over the world, in particular with BusyWeb's online marketing tools, including our Buzz Builders programs and WordPress powered web design. When we publish our websites to, for our clients, we seamlessly integrate social media so that when you update your website, it auto posts to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, and more. We build those websites fully mobile responsive so that you can get seen and get found on mobile devices. And we build them so that you own and control your content. Of course, we give you the opportunity to have us help you with that, but we build our websites to help our clients generate buzz without getting stoned. All of this comes into play because especially with Constant Contact, we're trying to teach you this year how to be a marketer. We're all owners of small businesses or organizations, and you have specific needs as a marketer. You can do this, it's not tough, but what I'd encourage you to do is just to stick with it and keep trying. And so today what we're gonna talk through as our agenda is of course the top five social networks. We're gonna talk Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Instagram. And then we're gonna talk about how to create and curate content, what to do and how to do it, photos, word images, and video. And we'll give you some handy tips on how to take advantage of free photo opportunities or free photo finding tools. Again, you don't want to use Google image search because copyrighted images have a sneaky way of finding their way into that content. And that can la land you with big fines or lawsuits. And then we'll cover the next steps. So once you know all of this stuff and you got this dialed in, we'll show you how to keep going and growing inside of your online marketing tools. So let's get right into it and start with the big dog, Facebook. What you need to know with Facebook is that it's really all about scale and reach. We know that Facebook's the largest social network. You know, they've, they've done a lot of amazing things over the past few years and really made it easy 
for small businesses in particular to market their services. This is the Facebook page for Honeypot Hill Orchards, a farm stand in Stowe, Massachusetts. Facebook can help your business because of their large, large audience. Facebook is absolutely the largest of the social networks. It's been around since 2004, and over a billion users are checking Facebook multiple times a day, primarily on their mobile devices. If you want to reach a large group of people across any network, really, Facebook is a great tool. It's important to start with the content that you're sharing. If you post things that people want to see from you, they'll be more interactive with your business and become loyal fans. You do need to be aware of how Facebook shows posts in the newsfeed. Facebook users don't see every single post from every friend and every business they follow because their algorithm affects their edge rank. And so there are different tricks and tools that you can use to get your content more likely to be seen. But having a strategy to get as many likes as possible on your Facebook page really doesn't help as much as it used to because what used to be a 40, 30 or 40 percent conversion rate or edge rank is now more like a 2 to 3 percent edge rank. And then finally, Facebook's Insights tool can help you find out what content is most appealing to your followers. And that'll help you stand out, give you an edge over that algorithm, and reach more people. Facebook content that works is really kind of in-depth. So marketing analytics company Quintly did a study and found that the types of posts that get the most interaction from fans on Facebook are videos, photos, and status updates. Videos are extremely popular on Facebook. They grab people's attention and put them in the middle of the action. As you see on here, Honeypot Hills has done that with an embedded YouTube video. One thing that you need to be concerned about with Facebook videos is you need to realize that those videos will automatically scroll. Sometimes they won't if you've embedded a YouTube video, but if you use Facebook's own tool, it'll automatically start playing as you're scrolling through the timeline. And so you need to make sure that your video immediately captures the attention of people that are scrolling through their timeline. And you also can't rely on audio in Facebook video because inside of the newsfeed, when people are scrolling through their timeline, they can't hear your video unless they explicitly click on it. So if you're going to have text or things that people need to hear, having closed captioning on your video can help dramatically increase the likelihood that people will capture the context of the content that you're publishing. Photos are similar to video content and it's really easy to create because we're all walking around with a camera in our pocket. Your photos need to reflect who you are and what you do. Show off what happens during your day, your products or services, and the people you meet. It's okay to take a selfie with your employees or customers and share it on Facebook. This photo collage from Honeypot Hill gives you a good idea of what visitors can find there during the weekend. And with all the emphasis on visual content, you might not think that status updates would be among the top content, but they came in third in Quintley's Facebook study for getting engagement. Make sure your post status updates work by being helpful, being conversational, and asking questions to get your audience talking. This status update from Honeypot Hill is a helpful post letting people know about their Columbus Day hours, available apple varieties, and attractions on the farm. We talked a little bit about this already, but edge rank is an algorithm that affects how your content is seen. Here's what the algorithm looks at. First, your fans' interest. Fans who have interacted with your page or posts recently will have a much better chance of seeing your content. How well your post has done with other Facebook users will be another important part, so a popular post has a better chance of appearing in the newsfeed. The performance of your past posts, once you start posting content that works, you'll be in a better position for future posts. And the type of post that your fans prefer. Someone who's interacted with videos in the past will be more likely to see your next video post. Timeliness is absolutely important. Recent posts will get priority over older content. <clears throat> so the more a user engages content with content from your page, the more Facebook will display your page's content to that user. The best way to make edge rank work for you is to post great and compelling content that your audience will comment on and share with friends and family on Facebook. Again, with Facebook's insight tool, the best way to find content that works for your fans is to take advantage of the tools that are available to you. Click the posts link to find out what types of posts are doing well with your audience. 
videos, photo status updates, or links. If you see that there are content types that aren't getting as many clicks, likes, comments, and shares, don't waste your time on them, or at least adjust your strategy to try it slightly differently. Focus on the types that are getting the best engagement and doing more of those. Speaking of engagement, click on the Reach tab and scroll down on the chart that shows your likes, comments, and shares over time. You can click on particular days of, on the chart to take a look at what content was getting interactions that day and get a better idea of what content is getting the most engagement. You should also take a look at who the people are who are interacting with your content. Click the People tab and then you'll see the People Engaged section. This tells you exactly which age groups and genders are actively engaging with your content. It also shows you what country and city they're in, as well as their preferred language. Look at this regularly to know how to compare the demographics of people who like your page. This is the audience that you thought you were reaching. If you didn't think, or if the actual audience wasn't being reached that you were trying to reach, you may need to make some changes to target the people you want to communicate with on Facebook. Everyone who uses Facebook for marketing wants to know what's the best time of the day of the week to post on Facebook. The answer is going to be different for every page because everyone's audience is different. Fortunately for you, Facebook Insights shows the best day and time to post for your audience. Click the Posts tab and then the When Your Fans Are Online section. This report looks at the past seven days and show you how many, shows you how many of your fans were using Facebook for each day of the week and each hour of the day. So it's really easy to find out the times and days that are most popular with your fans, and you can schedule your content to post when a lot of your audience will be online to see it. So what next with Facebook? Here's the best practices that you learned today. First, find out what content is successful. Start with what you know already if you've been using Facebook for your business. Try sharing content that works, videos, photos, and status updates. Check your Facebook insights to find out what's getting the most engagement from your fans. Pay attention to content types, but also to what topics, information, or products you're talking about in that content. Then, keep sharing what's popular with your fans so they'll continue to see your content in the newsfeed. And be strategic about when you post. Use Facebook insights to find out when your fans are active on Facebook and more likely to see your posts. Then use Facebook's scheduling tool to target those optimal times and days. Note that you can also do this through your website, as I've mentioned before, with BusyWeb's websites, we actually build it so that you can automatically post to all of your social networks. So use that data to figure out when to post content to your website. Take some time out on a regular basis to check your Facebook insights. Your audience's preferences and behaviors may change over time. So make sure you're adapting in order to provide them with what will work for your audience and your business. Now let's take a break before I switch over to Twitter. Make sure that we don't have any questions. If you do have questions, would love to see that here. We have a whole slew of people here. Um, so if you do have questions, or if you feel like interacting with us and you're logged in here, just um, jot in that ask a new question button what your favorite social network is. Just want to make sure that we've got people in and that we're talking. If you don't feel like chatting, that's fine. And if you want to ask me a question offline, that's cool. Again, just send a note to Dave at BusyWeb.com and I'll handle your question offline. But we'd love to have it here for the benefit of everyone. All right, let's get back into business and let's talk about Twitter. With Twitter, the biggest business value that you can provide is immediate news and post updates. Twitter's a fast-moving social network where posts are shown chronologically in real time, so you can check it to find the latest news and updates. There's no algorithm for Twitter, so everything you see posted is pretty much happening right now. This Twitter profile is for the nonprofit Strong Women, Strong Girls community out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Boston, and they use a lot of the best practices we're going to cover for Twitter. How you can stand out and promote yourself on Twitter is by creating and sharing tweets that work best for the Twitter environment and your followers. We'll talk about using images and some things you should keep in mind with the text of your tweets. You can really build a following by being helpful on Twitter. People follow businesses to find out latest news or get insider tips. Think of Twitter as an extension of your customer service or the FAQs frequently asked questions on your website. 
Analytics are important on Twitter, and you can use data to help find the audience that you're trying to reach and get content insights that will help you be strategic, strategic about how you use this social network. Twitter content that works is kind of ephemeral. Everything is being posted and displayed on Twitter in real time. If you're following a lot of people in businesses, that's a lot of information coming at you all at once. How can you make your business stand out? Well, first, social media marketing analytics Buffer analyzed one million tweets, and there are a few tips they found that will make you a more effective marketer on Twitter. First, use images with your tweets. Twitter started out with only text posts and allowed multimedia in tweets back in 2011. But photos aren't used by everyone posting on Twitter, so including a photo or a video will help get your tweets noticed, especially in the Twitter timeline on the actual Twitter app on iOS and Android or in the web version. Twitter displays uploaded photos in a large format, so yours is going to stand out like this photo from Strong Women, Strong Girls in a recent event. There's also a 140 character limit on Twitter. There's some talk about that, um, that content limit going away, but that doesn't mean that you, that you shouldn't keep your tweets as short as possible. Shorter tweets do better on Twitter. Buffer learned that a post that's just text or text with a link, like you see here in this Strong Women, Strong Girls tweet, the photo is pulled up automatically from the page you link to as a preview, and it should be between 120 to 140 characters. Posts that have an image uploaded should be between 20 and 40 characters. Shorter posts get more engagement. One reason for this is that when someone retweets your tweet using Twitter's mobile app or third-party tools, the retweet function automatically inserts your Twitter handle and the text from your original tweet. If you've maxed out on 140 characters in the post, the person who is retweeting will have to take some time to rewrite that tweet to fit. Short tweets save time, make you as easy as possible to share. Also, use hashtags in your tweets. Hashtags are those little pound signs that are available um, and you see all over the TV and everywhere else. Buffer study shows that hashtags will get you more engagement when they have a longer life cycle. If you're not familiar with what a hashtag is, it's the word or phrase with letters and numbers with a pound sign at the front. When you use a hashtag on social media, that phrase is turned into a link. Anyone who clicks on that link will see other messages that use the same hashtag. Hashtags help call attention to the topics you're talking about in your message, and more people will see your tweets if they're linked to conversations happening on Twitter around cer certain topics. Strong women, strong girls use their own hashtag, an event hashtag, and the relevant hashtag, like a girl, because they related to the content and the conversation. One word of warning with hashtags, make sure you research the hashtags that you're using to make sure that you're not hopping into something that you probably shouldn't be adding to the conversation on. People have many different styles and many different opinions, and they may be using a hashtag for a reason much different than what you're thinking that hashtag could be. There's no magic to hashtags. It's just a simple code that anyone on Twitter can search for. And so you may have a group that's diametrically opposed to the goals of your organization using the same hashtag, and you don't want to jump onto that promotional device. Next on Twitter, you really need to be helpful. I mentioned earlier that you can gain a loyal following on Twitter if you're using it to be helpful. Twitter users follow people and businesses that are providing them with interesting and useful information. If they know that they can go back to that account to find the latest information on something or to ask a question, they're more likely to search you out on Twitter to find that information. Tweet links to blog posts you've written or helpful posts from expert blogs or news sites that you read regularly. Again, BusyWeb's tools allow you to automatically post tweets of your headlines from your website to Twitter. It'd be a very easy way to post and publish more content to your website or get more traffic. Share interesting facts, ticks, stats, or tips that will inform your audience or help them accomplish something. And it's very common for customers to use Twitter to ask questions of businesses or experts. Make sure to watch your notifications from followers who need help and tag your business in their tweets. There are plenty of chances to participate in conversations happening on Twitter and add value to discussions. Respond to followers who tag you or tweet you. 
Click on hashtags you're using to see what others are saying and add your thoughts to the conversation. The more your name appears in discussions, the more people will think of you or your business when they need information on the topics you talk about. And of course, you'll get more followers on Twitter. Make sure to strike a balance of content on Twitter. Every tweet shouldn't be blasting out information about your business. Offer other sources that your followers will find helpful. Talk to people and answer questions. Probably more than any other tool, um, perhaps rather than LinkedIn, Twitter is intended to be a helpful tool, not a promotional tool. Also, use Twitter's analytics tool to know what works. If you're not measuring, measuring, you're not marketing. Guessing when it comes to Twitter content is not a great idea. Use Twitter's analytics tool to determine what tweets are most popular with your followers. You can find this in your profile or go to analytics.twitter.com. Here's what you should be paying attention to. First, your top mentions. When you go to your Twitter analytics dashboard, analytics will show you the top tweets that mentioned your Twitter handle that got the most engagement over the past 28 days. Pay attention to these mentions. Follow the people who mention you and follow the people who retweeted the tweet. They've already indicated that they're interested in what you have to say, so now is the time to start building a relationship with these people through Twitter. And if you haven't heard already, the best way to grow followers on Twitter is by following people. It's considered good form to follow people that follow you, and so having a good solid follow strategy is a great way to increase your follows on the backside. Next, click the Tweets tab in your analytics and sort your tweets by top tweets to find out what content did the best. Keep an eye on what got the highest engagement and pay attention to what hashtags, topics, links, and images you used. Continue to create similar content that your followers are interested in. Twitter Analytics also has a breakdown of your engagements. It shows you the average rate, rate of engagement, link clicks, retweets, likes, and replies on any given day. Start with your average and set a goal for yourself. Change your Twitter content and watch to see how your engagement improves over time. You'll be able to find out who your followers are. Click over to the Audiences tab to get a closer look at the interests, occupation, and spending habits of your Twitter followers. Adjust your Twitter content to appeal to your followers or change your content completely if you want to attract a different group. So what to do next on Twitter? Well, first, look for trends throughout your Twitter content. What's getting the most interactivity? Are people interested in the blog post links you're sharing, the hashtags you're using, or the type of tweet, such as a tweet with a photo versus a text tweet? Experiment with the content that works. Not using images, short tweets, or hashtags? Try those and see what happens. Continue to share content your audience wants to see in your tweets. Be consistent in what you're sharing. You'll earn their trust, and you'll, they'll come back to you when they need information or are looking for something interesting. Make it easy on yourself. Use a free scheduling tool like Hootsuite or Buffer, or best of all worlds, your website, to schedule your tweets in advance so you don't have to be online all the time. Buffer has an optimal timing tool that analyzes your tweets and tells you the best time to schedule your posts. And finally, check your analytics regularly to see if your trends are changing, and then adjust your tweets to fit your audience's preferences and demographics. So we're at the end of Twitter. Just wanted to follow over. Looks like Stuart likes LinkedIn. La Vida Loca Properties loves Twitter. Um, Elvira loves Instagram. Deb uses Facebook. So thank you all for that content and, and for chiming in. If you have specific questions for any of those tools, now is a great time to take advantage of that and um, shoot me a question. Again, if you're feeling shy, you can do that via email at dave at busyweb.com. And feel free to send me an email and request the PowerPoint slides from today by, again, just sending an email to dave at busyweb.com and saying, please send me the slide deck. All right. So let's go into, drum roll please, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the business network. We used to say that it was the network for adults, but really Facebook has taken over everybody's demographics. So LinkedIn is the social network that you can use to stand out with your corporate expertise. It's a social networking site that's focused on businesses and careers. As a user, you can create a profile that includes your resume and skills, and you can post status updates. Businesses can create a business account that showcases their products, services, and news, 
and you can post content there as well. Again, your website can be set up to automatically post to your LinkedIn company page if you're doing it correctly. We're going to focus today on the business page for LinkedIn, not the personal profile. The LinkedIn business page you see here is for Fogged In Bookkeeping, located on the Nantucket Island in Massachusetts. When you post updates on LinkedIn or your business page, share what you know. Is there a new fact or stat that you learned about recently? Have you written a blog post that offers tips or advice? Or have you read a great post from an expert in your field? Share what you know so you can educate your followers. They'll appreciate the free advice. Use LinkedIn to become an information source. Share the things you know or write about, but also provide a diverse selection of other sources. If you read blogs of news sources about your industry, it's okay and encouraged to share something that they've posted. Make sure you link back to them, otherwise that's plagiarism. You're helping your audience by providing the info and they'll keep coming back to you because you're the go-to person for them on the latest news in your industry. And of course, you need to monitor what's working for you on LinkedIn, so take advantage of the data in its analytics platform. LinkedIn content is kind of different from other social networks. You can really dig in and be a lot more in depth with LinkedIn than you can with most other networks. Start with blog posts, your own posts and helpful blog posts that you read about from other sources. Users check LinkedIn to find out what's new in their industry or to discover what new products or services are available. Offer your opinion on what's happening or link to another source that has the information and include comments that you learned about in the blog post. It's certainly okay to share a link and include an excerpt from that blog post as well. Small Biz Trends suggests writing long form posts between 500 to 1200 words. Search engine optimized posts as far as Google is concerned is 300 posts or 300 words. So I would set that as your minimum benchmark, but make sure that you get content that's more in depth and attention getting. They'll get, those, they'll get that attention because people want as much information as possible to help them make decisions and improve their business. What's amazing for you on this is the more helpful you are on LinkedIn, the more likely you are to be recommended or endorsed. Use images to illustrate your posts. Posts with images receive a 98% higher comment rate. Images can be a word image or a quote, which can be a text over a background or next to a photo. We'll cover that in a little bit. Uh, you can have a photo of you on the job, behind the scenes photos, event photos, or pictures of new products. We know that photos grab attention, so stand out in the LinkedIn newsfeed with some visual interest. Humorous images are fine on LinkedIn as long as they're relevant. Fogged in Bookkeeping shared a funny e-card in ecards.com. Some ecards.com e is a great tool for grabbing those. Um, they followed so, or shared something on tax refunds. And so nice feeling you get when you receive a tax refund and you realize it was your own money in the first place. Interesting, engaging, and fun. If you were with me at Social Media 101, 50% of everything that you do should be designed to engage and draw people into conversation. 30% of what you do should be designed to inform, and the last 20% should tell them what to do next. Posts with links will get you about 200% more engagement. If there's something on your website, an industry-related website or blog, or a video that could be helpful to your followers, post a link to it. LinkedIn will preview the web page you're linking to by pulling an image from the page, the title, and an excerpt of the text. This is automatically done when you post to LinkedIn from your website, so it's a great way to drive traffic to your website. In general, Sharing content we just talked about will help you build your reputation as a credible expert on LinkedIn. People will know that you're a huge source of information on certain topics. Build on that by doing the following things. Share news about your business and your industry. It's okay to be more vocal about your business on LinkedIn because people are looking for that information here. It's not like Facebook where your product announcement gets posted next to links of funny videos in the newsfeed. People here do business. Have discussions on LinkedIn. It's not enough to link to information. You're an expert. Offer your perspective. Is the information you're linking to helpful, interesting, good to know, or game-changing for your industry or business? Why? Ask others' opinions on it. 
open the door to discussion, and people won't hesitate to add their two bits. Your LinkedIn business page is searchable on Google, so be strategic about the keywords or most common phrases you use on your page. What subjects and topics are the focus of your expertise? List them in your company description and the specialties section of your page. LinkedIn users will be looking for businesses to find information on certain topics, so make sure yours get found in those searches. And you need to post consistently to get noticed on LinkedIn. It's simple, the more you post, the more visible your company is. Posting 20 status updates each month, month will help you reach 60% of your audience. As far as LinkedIn's analytics tool, your LinkedIn analytics will really help find out what information is most appealing to your followers. When you visit your analytics dashboard, you're going to see a list of your most recent updates. Focus on the clicks and interactions. These numbers will tell you how many followers were interested in your content and clicked your links or photos. The engagement number adds up to the number of times a post was liked, shared, or commented on. You can dig in a little bit more in the engagement metrics further down the page. This chart allows you to separate the different types of engagement and see how they've changed over time. And scroll down again on that analytics page to see the demographics of your followers. Remember, LinkedIn followers provide a lot of information on their profile page, so you'll get a very good picture of who they are. Click the drop down menu to view by seniority, industry, size of company, their job function, and which of your followers are your employees or non-employees of your company. At the very bottom of your analytics dashboard, you'll find demographics of people who have viewed your LinkedIn business page. Use the drop-down menu to find the details of these visitors' seniority, company size, and job function. So what next on LinkedIn? First, create a blog to write about what you do, what you know, and what you think you can build on your reputation as an expert. If you don't want to set up a blog on your own, try using LinkedIn's publisher tool. You can only use it for your personal profile and not a business page, but it's a good place for you to start creating blog posts. Your business page can link to posts published by your personal profile, and the publisher tool comes with analytics, so you'll be able to track how well your content is doing. Be aware of the LinkedIn content that's getting the best results from you, and continue to share that information on your that your followers are actively integrating with. And look for content that exists beyond your website. Offer your followers a diverse collection of content so they can get a well-rounded view of your industry. Sharing content from other sources shows that you're tapped into everything that's happening and you're a reliable source. And of course, monitor your analytics and be aware of the content trends, information about the people who make up your audience, and the demographics of visitors that come to your page. Are they the people you want? Are they who you expected? Share the content that works best for them. All right. Let's jump over, just double check and making sure we don't have any questions. Looks like we're good. So let's keep going into Pinterest. Pinterest is the visual social network. The business value of Pinterest is to drive people to your website. It's a social network where users pin images or videos of things they like to virtual bulletin boards. You can think of it as a virtual scrapbook. It's a way for users to visually bookmark things they wanna buy, hobbies that they have, interests, or information. These pins are typically linked to a website where you can buy things, learn more about hobbies, read blog posts about various topics, or visit a web page with more information about that pin. If you've seen House, House is basically Pinterest for the real estate and construction industry. So the business value inside of Pinterest is to start by pulling in people with the images you share. You need to make your images colorful and visually appealing. Show details of your products or use word images to illustrate an idea or something that's not physically tangible, like a blog post, a fact, stat, tip, or a quote. You can build loyal follower base if you use Pinterest to promote products that people want, but also make an effort to share pins that provide value. Share content that helps solve a problem, learn something new, or is simply interesting or entertaining. It's important to use Pinterest analytic tools to uh, discover which of your pins are working well. Use that data to determine what to pin next. The Pinterest newsfeed is an image traffic jam. 
You're seeing nothing but visuals with small text descriptions. How do you make your pins stand out? First, start with the quality of your images. If something isn't visually appealing, don't pin it. Share images with bright, vibrant colors. Use professional photos of your products. You can take photos with your smartphone for your pins. Just make sure that they're good and that you take the time to properly light them. Word images work well on Pinterest. Take an image and write a description in the text next to it. Create a quote image with a popular or relevant quote overlaid on a bright color and an interesting image. Or use a similar combination with the title of a blog post that you want to pin. Although you do have text descriptions for your pins, and including those text descriptions is urgent for search engine optimization, the visuals are going to get the people's attention first, so they'll notice your text on the image before seeing the pin description. The size of your image will also help get your content noticed. Long images take up more room in the Pinterest newsfeed than something small and square. Dominate the Pinterest newsfeed by using large, long images for pins if possible. Your pins should help people find your products and provide them with valuable information. Share the beautiful product photos that are on your website. Your product pin should link back to the place on your website where you can purchase that product right away. If you have a blog, create images for your posts and pin them on Pinterest. People are looking for things to buy, but they're also looking for how-to information and tips, and you want them to bookmark your content and repin it to their boards. Be strategic about the keywords you use on Pinterest. This is your top dog marketing strategy to get you found, so use the keywords correctly and link back to your content on your website. It's easy to become self-promotional on Pinterest if the only pins you're bookmarking are your own. Look for other resources that might appeal to the lifestyle of your brand and complement your product, services, or information to become a one-stop shop. For Pinterest analytics, there's a great analytics tool on Pinterest that'll give you a detailed overview of how your content is doing and the demographics of the people who follow you. Click over the Pinterest profile section to find out how much engagement your pins are getting. The repins and clicks tab will show you how many shares your content has received and how many people clicked on the links in your pins over time. Pay attention to the popular content Pinterest displays in the repins and clicks to show what your pins are getting, which of your pins are getting the most engagement and what links are interesting to Pinterest users. The pins from your website section of Pinterest at, uh, that Pinterest users have created from images they've pinned from your website, and how many pins have been created from your website. Take note of what people are pinning. This is really valuable information because it shows you what Pinterest users are interested in purchasing from you or what information they want to read from your website. Make sure you're pinning that too and include keywords in your pin description and your website to get that content found. The audience section of Pinterest analytics can help you target your Pinterest content to match the people who are following you and pinning your pins. Take a look at demographic information like location and gen gender. You can go even further by checking out the content audience interests to see what topics they're pinning the most and what boards they follow. Look for patterns and pin relevant content about your business and industry that fits those interests. As for what to do next on Pinterest, pin the right images to get noticed, make them visually appealing, include bright colors, and use longer pins to take up more real estate on, in, on the Pinterest feed. People might be pinning content from your website. Check your analytics to be sure. Whether or not they are, add great visuals to your website that are pin-worthy. Pinterest pins have a long shelf life beyond their post date, so use the right keywords to get them found in a Pinterest search, and make analytics part of your Pinterest routine. Check them regularly to make sure you're on top of what content works and what interests you can pin to connect with your audience. Finally, let's talk about Instagram. Instagram is different than the other social networks we've covered so far because most of the activity takes place in the Instagram app on your smartphone. You can access Instagram on your desktop web browser, but you can't post photos from there. Instagram users post images and videos through the Instagram app. This is the Instagram profile for Extend Yoga, located in Bethesda and Rockville, Maryland. The benefits to using Instagram promote your business to promote your business is that photos allow your followers to get to know you and your business. It's pretty similar to Pinterest, really. Be choosy about which images you post to Instagram. Don't share everything. The photos you share here should be visually interesting to tell a story or convey an experience. 
Think of Instagram as the most highly thoughtful and integrated content you're going to post. This is the stuff that shines, that you put a special filter over, and that look perfect. The kinds of photos here help put your audience in the moment. Use photos to take them along during your day-to-day -day activities or special events. Another difference between Instagram and other social networks is that it doesn't have a native analytics platform. You need to use a third-party tool to measure your Instagram content. One low-cost tool that we suggest is called Iconosquare. It's available for $2.40 a month. Instagram content, <clears throat> of course, works. Photos are great, but not just any photos. Be strategic about taking your photos and staging them. Use the right filters, play with it a little bit, use interesting angles, and tell an image story about who you are and what you do. Word images are popular in, on Instagram, especially quotes. We'll talk about some tools you can use in a little bit, but using image quotes on Instagram is a great way to drive traffic. And you can share videos on Instagram, but they're limited to 15 second loops. Take a video of a quick, quick tip, like Extend Yoga does to demonstrate a yoga pose and preview upcoming classes, or show people what's happening right now where you are. Demonstrate a product or introduce your followers to an employer or customer. You can experiment with the timing of your video. It can be in real time or try a slow-mo or a time-lapse video to make sure your content is visually interesting. The key with Instagram content is to make your audience feel like they're experiencing what you are experiencing. Make them feel like they're there. Extend Yoga often shares photos of behind the scenes of their yoga studio at events or during training and practices. Use visual content on Instagram to educate your followers. Show them how to do something so that they feel empowered. This photo from Extend Yoga talks about the triangle pose and it encourages followers to check out a new post on the studio's blog to learn more. Hashtags are everywhere on Instagram and they can help get your content noticed. The Instagram posts with 11 or more hashtags get the highest engagement. So use hashtags that are relevant to your business and the content in your photo. People click on hashtags and search for hashtags for topics they're interested in, and you want them to find your posts. You can do a search on Instagram for different word combos and see what hashtags are most popular. Instagram will show you how many posts have been created with particular hashtags. Choose ones that are popular, but not too popular. Your post will get lost if 5 million photos are using the same hashtag, but a hashtag that side the three photos won't get you any attention either. When you post to Instagram, you have the option of tagging your location in the photo. Be sure to tag your business or whatever the location is of your content. Instagram users do click on locations to find more about them, and if you want your content to represent what's happening in your location, tagging your location is a great way to go. We mentioned Icona Square briefly, and here's how to know what works for you inside of Instagram. First, click the rolling month analysis tab and get total likes and comments for the past 30 days. You'll also see your top five photos for likes and comments for the past month. This will help you get a better idea of what to keep posting in order to get the best engagement from your followers. If you're testing something such as photos versus word images, it's an easy way to see what type of content your, your followers like the most. When you click the optimization tab, You'll find data that helps you figure out what you should be posting on Instagram to get you the most in engagement from your followers. This chart shows what you've been posting and highlights the times and days your posts are getting engagement. If you haven't been posting at the times your audience is most active, start now. The Instagram feed is a real-time chronological feed just like Twitter, so timing is the key. Scroll down the optimization reports to find hashtag data. The hashtag chart compares your hashtags with the top 100 hashtags used on Instagram. Try using some of the top hashtags, but only if they're relevant, to get your posts seen by more people. What to do next on Instagram? First, use Instagram to illustrate the story of your business. Create visually interesting posts that will help your audience feel like they're part of the experience and help them understand who you are and what you do. Hashtags will help you get your Instagram content in front of more people. Do searches on Instagram to find relevant hashtags and use them, and then check out Iconosquare's list of the top hashtags to see if any of those fit. Iconosquare has a lot of helpful data, and one of the most important insights you can find there is the best time and day for you to post. Be strategic and post at the moment that matters when a majority of your audience is scanning their feed to get the most engagement possible. 
make analytics, and in this case, Iconosware, part of your Instagram marketing strategy. Take a look at your best content every month. Take time throughout the year to compare trends you're seeing from month to month, and then adapt your content to fit what's working well for you. So there's the top networks. Now let's talk about how to create and curate content. <clears throat> we covered this briefly before, and I embedded this before in my conversation, but the content you'll create for social media will vary from network to network. There is general guidelines for how to think about the content you'll create. Here's how to split up that content. 50% of your content should be interesting and entertaining to your audience. You're engaging them to draw them in. Remember that people use social media to find out what's new or interesting with their friends, family, and businesses. Be conversational, ask questions, ask for opinions. People love to talk about themselves. So open that door by being interactive. You can also just brighten their day. Share an inspirational quote or image, an interesting fact, or a fun or funny photo that relates to your business or industry. The next 30% of the content you share should provide information and be useful in helping your readers. Think tips, stats, education, and curated content from blogs or news sites. And the remaining 20% can be about your business. It can be about calls to action, asking people to take the next step, purchase something, register for an event, read a blog post, or learn about a new product or service. It's okay to use calls to action, but don't hammer people with buy now messaging. This formula can be used on just about whatever social network you use, and on multiple social networks if you're using more than one. Keep in mind that you do need to adapt the content for the network you're posting to. BusyWeb's websites automatically adjust that content and post to all of the networks we've been talking about. So make sure that you connect with that. Content curation is sharing content from other sources. It's kind of overwhelming to think about all the content that you need to come up with, but you don't have to source everything. Think about a thinking about yourself as a curator of an art museum, someone that grabs other people's work and displays it is a great way to think about effective use of social media. Your curated content could be a link to a news article posted on your organization or a brief with a brief paragraph including your perspective. The example here is a, from a Facebook post from a craft store, Three Kittens Needle Arts. They shared some information from a knitting community, Ravelry.com. Here's a tweet from a chocolate company, Taza Chocolate, on their Twitter feed. It links to a blog post and recipe for chocolate souffles that's hosted on a website called The Kitchen. All they had to do was write a brief introduction and then link to the open articles. It's that easy. So where do you find all this content? First, read your local and regional news. Maybe you've been mentioned or maybe you have something to say about goings on in your community. A lot of news sites offer their recent news content for free. Just make sure that if you link your content on a news site, it's not something you need a subscription to read. You can read blogs related to your field. One way to easily gather lots of information about blog posts is through Feedly, a service that aggregates blogs from all over. I personally use Feedly and every night review about 45 websites and several hundred articles, and it takes me less than 15 minutes using Feedly. You should follow others on social media. This is a world of almost infinite possibilities. Let's go back to that animal shelter example. They'd want to follow other shelters, national groups like the ASPCA, pet retailers, and other animal advocacy groups, and share content from those sources. Set up Google Alerts. Google will aggregate pages that mention a phrase you've created alert for. You should definitely set one using your organization's name to keep an eye on what people are saying about you online. Subscribe to other email lists. This is a great way to get ideas for your content and see what other people are sharing. One way to get creative and find content is to easily, to easily share is to have others create it for you. Share photos, videos, quotes, or reviews that have been created by employees, customers, or clients. And finally, you should always provide links to the original source and let people know why you're sharing that content. From there, you can repurpose and reuse your content everywhere. I've talked about how you can use your website to automatically publish to all of these networks, but you could easily take a pin, share it on Facebook, connect with that pin and repost it on Instagram, and then send that content out in email marketing to easily and quickly reach out to the right people. 
Photos, word images, and video is the final thing we're gonna talk about before we get into next steps. We've talked about a few things out here, uh, including Instagram, but this is a great tool to use if you wanna find great photos. There's editing tools, and you can save your Instagram images on your phone and then share them on any other social network. PicStitch is a great and free app that allows you to create photo collages that you can save to your phone and upload to Instagram or any social network. And Word Swag, with the Word Swag app, you can text a photo and choose from different colors and typefaces to use. It's $2.99 at your phone's app store. You may want to use desktop tools for larger images. PowerPoint's one that you probably already have, and there are a lot of great options for de online desktop tools, including Canva, which is one that I really like. It's a free online image editor that's great for doing word quote images. You can use it on Instagram, pinning pins, Facebook cover photos, and et cetera, and it's easy. Although Canva's free, if you want to use some stock images and designs, you might need to spend a buck a piece for those images. And then PicMonkey. PicMoney is a free and online tool that allows you to edit photos, create collages, and add overlays of text to in, into your images. Pick Money's free, Monkey is free, but you can get more features with the paid version at 33 bucks a year. If you need stock photos, do not use Google Image Search. Instead, go to freedigitalphotos.net, stockvault.net, freeimages.com, or my favorite, photopin.com to grab content that you can freely reuse. You can create Word images they're great to visually share tips, which look boring just as text. A, color photo fo a colorful photo or background adds great interest and gets you noticed. Create word images with your favorite quotes. Use your word images to talk about product promotions, sales, or upcoming events, and use them to share news, announcements, or updates about your business. Here's a quick social media size guide. And again, we're getting close to the end here, so I'm gonna keep skipping ahead. But if you want, use Alt Print Screen on your computer right now to grab this, this image. Or if you're on a Mac, do Command Shift 4 to get the crosshairs. Or of course, email me at daveatbusyweb.com to get this image size guide. For video, it's an advanced topic, and I have other busy webinars on this. But really, make sure that you use the built-in video tools in your smartphone or with Instagram to upload those images. You can share all of this stuff via social media to reach out and to further get more content in front of your, in front of your clients. Streaming video allows you to broadcast live from your smartphone from wherever you are. Periscope is great for this. You can show audience behind the scenes in your business. You can interact with your followers. You can invite folks to ask you questions prior to or during a broadcast. You can interview experts at your business or your industry, and you can train them on using products or services. Again, the ones to look at, Periscope, Meerkat, and Blab. When you broadcast using Periscope or Meerkat, you can only use one camera at a time. With Blab, you can have up to four people broadcasting in a session. Um, Google Hangouts on Air are also a great way to, to promote. As far as scheduling your live streams, streams, Periscope is more spontaneous. You just start your stream and go. Meerkat and Blab allow you to schedule broadcasts and promote them in advance so people can plan to attend. All the apps allow you to share a link to your live session via Twitter, and there are commenting tools for each app as well. Periscope, Periscope users can type comments and click the heart button to show that they like the live stream. And finally, what happens to the broadcast after they end? You can save a copy of the video on your phone when you use any of the apps and publish it to any social network later on. I suggest YouTube. If you're using Periscope, the video appears on your profile for only 24 hours. Meerkat, broad Meerkat broadcasts disappear when your live stream is over and they don't appear in your profile. Finally, next steps. Here's what to do. There's a lot of stuff that you need to think about, but really, it all starts with planning. Take, a time, take some time on Fridays and think about what's coming up for the next week. Leave one or two posts open and be flexible for something else that, get, that comes up. And don't forget about email. Email is the one thing that unites everything and everyone in your messaging. Constant contacts, tools automatically integrate Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and allow you to share back and forth between those tools. And 
I'm going to, I'm going to actually skip this cause we're getting a little short on time, but social media examiner had a lot of content out there and that content disappeared because their Facebook page has been, was disappeared from existence. They had email, so they were still okay, but it was down and it was gone. Don't rely on any one network. Go for your website first, your email second, and then rely on the social networks to grow. You can save time with simple tools like social share, scheduling your posts on Facebook, Hootsuite, or your website, and set up searches to monitor what others are saying. 20 minutes at a time, three to five times a week is about all you'll need to do in social media. That concludes our content for the day. I'll leave you with this. If you sign up with Constant Contact to, with BusyWeb by going to busyweb.com slash cc, um, you'll get a $199 value free custom template to use for your emails. Plans start at 20 bucks a month, and you can also start for free for up to two months. Remember that we have busyweb.com trainings, and we've got some great stuff coming up at busyweb.com slash events. And finally, if you'd like to join us and get emails from us and you haven't already subscribed, just text BUSY to 22828 to get added to our email marketing list. We share lots of helpful tips, tricks, and content every week to help you grow your business and generate buzz online. Don't forget to grab your free trial at busyweb.com slash cc or to get a free buzz report at busyweb.com slash buzz. That'll be a free like 10 page social media and search engine optimization report that tells you what you can do best to grow your business. If I missed your question, I'll follow up after the event here, but don't be afraid or be shy to send me a note if you would like this slide deck. Thank you all very much for joining us and joining me at BusyWeb to help you generate buzz without getting stung. Talk to you next time.